So in ice fishing, what you do is you have a big lake and you sort of discern <laughs> where to drop down your line because once you open a hole, you, you stay there. You, you, know, you try to figure out where the fish are going to be, but you're not digging you know, a hole into three feet of ice very easily. And so once you choose your spot, you, you sort of make camp there. And I think about then mm -hmm. that hole and um, then what you do, because it's really cold, is you build a little hut around the spot. And so I think about some of the things that are part of group spiritual direction practices and the structures that we follow and the covenants that we do together as like the, the, the building of the hut. Mm -hmm. And then the work that you're doing in, in the group spiritual direction process. Um, we were talking about how a lot of the models for group spiritual direction, you focus on one person at a time and the others in the group are called to meet that person where he or she is and help her or him to deepen whatever it is that they're sharing. And so this image of making one hole and you drop one line you know, deep into the mm. depths of the water, it's such a lovely mm. uh, um, particular image for mm. thinking about how group spiritual direction is mm. a specific expression of this bigger call I think that we have towards iceberg work. So. Iceberg work and ice fishing. <laughs> I think, honestly, the single most important thing we do mm -hmm. as a spiritual director mm -hmm. is work on ourselves. Yeah. Keep waking up. Yeah. Because if we don't, our stuff gets in the way of mm -hmm. being the empty hole that you described so beautifully mm -hmm. in the ice fishing yeah yeah in order to be that hole that receptive empty hole yeah we've got to keep working our stuff sometimes when I think about what what does contemplation mean I, I talk about two aspects of it not only the depth which I think a lot of us are naturally inclined to kind of think about but the breadth piece too that that when we see different perspectives or when we see variety and difference mm. and when we marvel in that difference and are caught in the wonder of it all that that's contemplative too. Why should people con contemplate? Why should people <laughs> in any way live a contemplative life yeah. and why should people connect? Uh, I really believe that the capacity for contemplation is again inclusive. It's available to every single human being that's ever been created or has ever existed. Um, and so um, that question of why should we be contemplative, I think partly has to do with responding to the wholeness of who we are. So um, uh, if I'm only using my capacity for intellect or only using my capacity for affect, my feelings, I'm not um, living into the fullness of who I was created to be as a human being. And, and so many of us, I think, because the contemplative is so elusive or mysterious, um, or just because people haven't told us that it's this God-given ability, capacity that we have, um, we tend to think that we maybe have to go somewhere or that it's only for a special group of people. Um, and, I, and, I, and I so don't agree with that. The contemplative is that space where the genuine connection happens, mm. right? Where um, even in our diversity or in our difference, when we're relating to each other in that wholeness, um, we're, um, I use the word resonance to describe how it feels, right? Like that mm. I can resonate even if something's different. Like when you have different notes of a chord, I can be singing one note and another note and in the differences, there's a beauty in the vibrations or the resonance that happen there. And I think um, that deep and wide place is the space of contemplation um, and that we're called to be into that fullness. Living a life which might be even described as mindfulness, mm -hmm. living a life being awake mm -hmm. is the way I like to yeah. talk about it, being awake. Yeah is being contemplative.